Here's example five on sketching rational functions. First thing to do is factor. If you can, I can see that in the numerator here, both of these terms have a common factor, which is x. So I can pull out an x and have this factorization. And in the denominator, I see it's a difference of squares. So I can also factor the denominator. OK, for my first step is find the y-intercept. y-intercept we find by evaluating the function for 0. And for that, I use the original function. So here I have 3 times 0 squared plus 0 over 0 squared minus 9. In the numerator, I will get 0. Denominator, negative 9. This will equal 0. So the y-intercept is at 0, 0. Step 2, find the zeros, or find the x-intercepts. x-intercepts. For that, I take the numerator, which is x times 3x plus 1, and I equal it to 0. And then I use the zero product property. And if this times this is 0, that must mean that x is equal to 0 and that and that 3x plus 1 equals 0. x is equal to 0 is one of the zeros or one of the x-intercepts and this one I need to solve for x. So 3x equals negative 1 divide by 3 both sides x is equal to negative 1 third. There we have our x-intercepts. Number 3 is find the vertical asymptotes for that, we take the denominator and equal it to 0. x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0 by the zero product property. That means x is equal to negative 3 and x equals 3. For the horizontal asymptote, I look at the degrees. The degrees are equal, 2 and 2. When the degrees are equal, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient in the denominator, which is 1. So this will equal 3. OK, now I'm going to draw a number line, which is our fifth step. Here's our number line. On this number line, remember, we will plot the zeros and the vertical asymptotes. This is all we're going to plot on this number line. I have a 0 at x equals 0. I have another 0 at x equals negative 1 third. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 3, so that means there's a wall at negative 3. And I have another wall at x equals 3, so over here there's another wall at x equal to 3. OK? Now these points are critical points, and they have divided my number line into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 regions. That's a lot of testing. So let's start. Let's start right away. I have this region here from negative infinity to negative 3. Then I have from negative 3 to negative one-third, from negative one-third to zero, from zero to three, and from three to infinity. Here are our five regions that the number line is divided into. Let's start testing some of the values. From negative infinity to negative three, I'm going to choose negative four. When I plug in negative four, I'll have a negative number out here and I'll have a negative number in here. In the denominator, this will be negative, and this will also be negative. So I have negative times negative positive, negative times negative positive, positive over positive. This will be above, above the x-axis. When I choose a number between negative 3 and negative 1 third, I'm going to choose negative 2. So when I have negative 2, I'll have a negative out here. I'll have a negative in here. 
I'll have a positive here, and I'll have a negative here. So negative times negative, positive. Positive times negative, negative. Positive over negative, negative. So this will be below. Now let's choose a value between negative one-third and zero. Negative one-third is negative 0.33. So I'm going to choose 0.2. Okay, negative 0.2. When I have negative 0.2, here's this will be negative. Negative 0.2, this will be positive. Negative 0.2 down here, this will be positive. And negative 0.2, this will be negative. So negative times positive is negative on top. And positive times negative is negative on the bottom. And negative over negative will be positive. And let's do from zero to from zero to three. I'm going to choose one. There's going to be positive outside. One is positive. In here, there's it's going to be positive. In here, it's going to be positive. If I choose a one, and one minus three will be negative. So positive over negative, positive over negative will be negative. So below, below. And this one we said was above, above. And our last interval, which is 3 to infinity, I'm going to choose number 4. So 4 outside of the parentheses will be positive. 4 here will make this whole expression positive. 4 plus 3 will be a positive value, and 4 minus 3 will also be positive. So we'll have positive over positive, which is positive, and that will be above. Okay, I'm done doing the analysis. Let's plot all the information on our graph. Let's start with the y-intercept. I have a y-intercept at 0, 0. So that means the graph will cross the y-axis at this point. I also have a 0 at 0, so there it is. This covers both the 0 and the y-intercept. A 0 at negative 1 third. Let's say that 1 is right here. This is 1. So negative 1 third, let's say it's about here. So here's my 0 at negative 1 third. Okay? And what else do I have? I have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. So if this is 1, this is 2. This is negative 3 right here. There's a wall here. So let's draw that wall. And I have another wall at x equal to 3. So on the other side, 1, 2, 3, right here, there's a wall at x equal to 3. OK. And now I'm going to draw my horizontal asymptote, which is at y equal to 3. So 1, 2, 3, right here. There I have all my imaginary lines drawn as dashed lines, and I'm ready to sketch. Okay, let's start right here. It says that in between neg negative infinity and negative 3, which is this region here, I am going to be above the x-axis. That means I'm going to be above the x-axis, and usually that means I'm also above the horizontal asymptote. So I'm somewhere around here. Notice I have a wall horizontally, and I have a wall vertically, and we already know what happens near this, these walls. The function will approach the walls and will become very close to the wall and then separate itself and then hits the other wall and splashes against the other, whoops, sorry, splashes the other wall. Oh, this is terrible. Let me erase this and try that again. Okay, so it'll splash up against this wall like that. Get very close. Okay, that's this region here done. Let's go to the second region here from negative 3 to negative 1 third. That means from this wall all the way to this 0 here. I know that the graph will cross the 0 and notice that after it crosses the 0 it will be above the x-axis so I'm gonna go up here. Okay, so 
to get to the zero I'm coming from negative values and since there's a wall here I know that this graph will approach that wall and splash up against it like that okay so something like that remember this is a sketch it's not perfect now notice I'm gonna cross over to this region where I'm at negative one-third and zero in between these two values right here these two dots that's where I'm at here and it says those are that it's positive or above the x-axis so I'm gonna go up over the x-axis but notice I'm not gonna go up too much because this zero here this white intercept is going to make me it's gonna pull my graph back down okay and notice that after the zero value I am below the x-axis so that means I've been pulled down right there into um, below the x-axis and now I hit this wall all the way over here so this is doing something like this and that wall will attract my graph and pull my graph very close to it so this is kind of messy but this is more or less what this is gonna do okay and there it is and then I have my graph after the wall or behind the wall at x equal to 3 and it's above the x-axis which generally means above the horizontal asymptote and again what do I have here I have two walls the horizontal one and the vertical one and I'm positive so that means this approaches that wall splashes and then splashes against that other wall like this there it is more or less there's the sketch okay let's go to WZ grapher and see what this looks like okay here's the graph using WZ grapher notice how this part is above the horizontal asymptote we had said that the horizontal asymptote was at x uh, y equal to 3 there it is it's above again on the other side it was also above 3 and it splashes against both walls this horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote which is at x equal to 3 here you can see there's kind of an imaginary line that these graphs will approach but will not touch okay also this area here remember in our graph we had a zero at negative one-third I believe it was so negative point three that zero and it would cross and go above the x-axis and come back down at x equal to zero well I'm gonna zoom this area in so that you can see that it it does happen let me zoom in let me bring it down there you see how it barely goes above here's x equal to point negative point three three you see on my cursor it shows x equal negative point three 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 it did cross that zero it came up just a little bit to come back down at x equal to zero and then it was again below the x-axis okay and remember that this has vertical asymptotes at x equal to three so I'm going to zoom out again so that you can see that this graph does have a vertical asymptote somewhere around here okay if I keep zooming out it will get closer to negative 3 okay so there you have it let's go back to my graph there it is since I opened these intervals more than I should have my threes are way out there remember I used two squares for one unit so this looks very very wide compared to the one in WZ grapher but it's basically the same sketch I hope you understood I'll see you in the next example